In today's tutorial, we'll be going over how you can use Procreate for the iPad to create this neon text effect as you can see that I've done here. Now to give you a preview of what we're going to be doing, I'm going to open up my layers menu and show you here. We're going to start out with this brick image right here, and in the end we're going to end up with some customized neon text that you can create like that. Now in order to follow along with this tutorial, you're going to need a couple of things. Number one, you're going to need a copy of this brick image. I'll have that linked in the description of the video. And you're also going to need a copy of this font here that we're going to use for our neon sign. It's called Learning Curve Pro. It's a free font that you can download, and I will have that linked in the description as, uh, as well. So go ahead and download and install that font before we get started and then we'll be good to go. So let me come back over here to my gallery. Let me come over here to my web browser. I already have this image opened up. I'm just gonna hold a tap over it with one finger and go to copy image, come back into Procreate, and I'm gonna open a new document based on the clipboard, like that. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is add a new layer to this image and fill it with black. So as you can see here, I have my color, my fill color set to black already. I'm gonna open up my layers menu. I'm gonna add a new layer. And then I'm going to take this black color and just drop it onto the canvas like that and fill it in. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the selection tool. I want to make sure I have ellipse selected and I'm going to create a nice little ellipse going through the center right here like that. And what I will do now is come tap on the actions menu and tap on cut and it should remove it from the center there like that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to blur this. So open up the uh, adjustments menu, go to Gaussian blur. And I'm just going to slide right like this to blur this image like that. And there you go. As you can see, we're getting like a nice little shadow effect on this brick texture like that, which is exactly what we're going for. So once that's done, let's edit this texture a little more just to make it a little more suitable for what we're creating here. I'm going to open up the Layers menu. I'm going to select the Texture layer. And I'm going to go to the Adjustments menu. I'm going to choose Hue, Saturation, and Brightness. What I want to do is I want to bring the brightness down a little bit. And then I want to bring the saturation down a little bit as well. We want the neon text to be the star of the show here. We don't want this brick image getting too much uh, prominence in our final design. We want it to be there visible in the background, but we want it to be subtle like that. That right there looks perfect. Okay, so now let's create some text. The first thing I want to do is change the color of the text, uh, the, the color of the fill here. I want to change this to white because we're going to use white text. I'm going to tap on the actions menu. I'm going to choose add text. And actually, you know what, let me undo that because it placed the text beneath this layer. Let me open up the layers menu. I'm going to hold a tap over this text item and just move it above layer two like that. So now it's on top and then close out of this. And I'm going to make this bounding box a little bigger like that so I can make this text larger. Triple tap on the text to select it. Choose a new font over here. And the font we are using is called Learning Curve Pro. So just go ahead and uh, access it. There it is. I'm going to make this bigger. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to change the text of this here. Let me change this to say something else. I just want this to say neon. There we go. And that's a little too big, so let me make that a little smaller. Make that a little smaller. There we go, looking good. Grab the uh, selection tool and there we go. So what I want to do now is convert this from a text item to a raster object. So I'm going to open up the layers menu, tap on the text, and go to rasterize. And now what we can do is we can grab our selection tool. Make sure you have snapping enabled over here. Let's turn that on. And I want to take this, oops, didn't mean to do that. I want to take this and put this in the center just like that. And you'll see these orange guides populating vertically and horizontally across the screen like that. And that right there is what we're looking for. Okay, so now let's add some neon glow to this text here. Let me zoom in on this a little bit. What I want to do first is change my color again. So let me change my color. I'm going to use a very light shade of pink here. As you can see, I have these four colors already aligned. I have white, which is the text, and I'm also going to use these three shades of pink right here. They start out lighter, and then they get medium, and then they get darker like that. So if you don't want to use pink, you could use any color you'd like. Just make sure you're using three different samples of uh, light, medium, and dark like that. Okay, so I'm going to start out with the light shade like that. And I want to open up my brush menu. I want to make sure I have a nice round brush chosen under the painting menu, choose round brush. And I want the size, let me zoom in on this letter N over here. I want the size of this brush to be slightly thicker than the uh, letters here. So let me make that a little bigger. And let me just stroke over it like that, as you can see here. And that right there looks pretty good. The only problem is we have this on the wrong layer. That's okay, I just wanted to test out the brush. Let me tap with two fingers to undo that. I'm going to open up the layers menu. I'm going to add a new layer. I'm going to hold a tap over it. And then I'm going to hold a tap over this layer and then move it beneath 
the text layer like that. And now we can go ahead and stroke the outline of this letter like that. And as you can see here, the desired result we are going for is for the, uh, the brush stroke to be slightly thicker than the text beneath it, as you can see here. Now, don't worry about this being accurate. It could be very sloppy if you'd like, just as long as it's there in any rudimentary way. This is gonna get blurred anyway, so it doesn't matter if this isn't very accurate. So just go ahead and paint it in as you see me doing here. Just like that, that's what we're looking for. Okay, now let's repeat this process with the darker shade and with the larger brush. So let's create a new layer, hold a tap, move this layer down here, and then we are going to choose a darker shade, the medium shade right there. And now I'm gonna make my brush a little bigger. There we go. Make sure I have my layer positioned correctly. Okay, I just wanted to double check that. And now I can go in here and start stroking this. Okay, that right there is a little too thick. I don't want it to be that big. So let me undo that by tapping with two fingers. Let me make that brush just a little smaller. You're gonna to have to play around with this a little bit just to get it just right. That right there is what I'm going for. So I'm gonna go ahead and stroke the outline of the text here with this. Very sloppy as you can see here. It really doesn't matter that it's not accurately uh, following the contours of the letters. Okay, that's good enough right there. And I'm gonna repeat this process one more time with a darker shade. So let me open my layers menu, add a new layer, hold a tap, bring this layer down beneath the other layers and change the color to the darker shade like that. And then this brush can be quite bigger. We want this one to be quite bigger. We want this one to be, we want like a big fat outline around this one like that. That's what we're going for right here with this one. So let me go ahead and paint this around. This one, I'm not really following the contours of the letters. I'm kind of just adding around the edges like this, kind of like it's an offset. Let me go ahead and paint that in. There we go. So let me zoom out now. Now it's time to work our design magic. We're gonna start blurring this and changing the uh, layer modes of all of these. So let's start with this one down here. Let's tap on the letter N right here and change the color mode to, change the, uh, the blend mode rather, to color. And as you can see there, it kind of superimposes it onto the uh, brick texture there, but we're gonna have to blur this a little bit. Let's go to adjustments, Gaussian blur, and let's slide to the right to give this a blur. And the effect of this one, as you can see here, we're just making it look like it's glowing on the bricks right there. This isn't so much a part of the neon light as much as it is part of the, uh, the bricks in the background. We want the bricks to look like it has neon light glowing on them. Okay, now we'll go to this one. We'll do the same thing. We're gonna change the blend mode of this one to add. So I'm gonna come down here. I'm gonna choose add and then close out of that. And again, adjustments, Gaussian blur. And I'm gonna blur this one about that much like that. Maybe a little more. Okay, looking good. And then finally, this one down here, we're not gonna change the layer mode of this one. We're gonna leave it just as it is. We're gonna select it, go back to adjustments, Gaussian blur, slide it to the right a little bit like that. And that right there is exactly what we're going for. Now, another thing we're gonna to wanna to do is add a little bit of a shadow behind the text here to make it look like it's, a, like, this, like it's an actual neon sign casting a shadow on the brick text beneath it. So let's come back to the layers menu. Actually, no, let's go to the colors menu set the color to black, and then open your layers menu and take the white text up top right here, slide this to the left, and then tap on duplicate. And now what I wanna do is tap on this again to get this flyout menu, and I want to choose alpha lock right here. And once we have alpha lock enabled, we can tap on this again, and then go to fill layer. And now that should turn black like that. What we could do now is hold a tap over this layer, position it beneath the white layer like that, and then tap on it again and let's remove the alpha lock. And now what we can do is we can grab our selection tool. Let me zoom in on this. Turn off snapping. This is just gonna get in the way of this part right here. And I'm just gonna take this and move this, give this a little bit of an offset like that. Move that over there about that much. And then we could change the opacity of this right here. Tap on that letter N icon and then just bring the opacity down like that. We want that to look nice and subtle. All right, let me zoom out. Oops, let me undo that. There we go. Okay, one final step here would be to change the, um, the color of this uh, uh, black shadow in the background here. We want this to make it look more realistic. So to do that, I'm gonna come over here to the adjustments menu and I'm gonna go to color balance and I wanna add a little bit of redness in here because if you notice here, or you know what, I have the wrong thing selected. Let me undo that. I wanna make sure I have the correct layer selected, obviously. Let me select the uh, layer two right here with the uh, black shadow on it. Then I'll come over here to the adjustments color balance, 
and I want to add a little bit of red in here. If you notice, if I add red, it, it looks too red. We don't want to do too much. We want to add just a very subtle little touch of red because we want this to look like it's the pink neon light giving off this effect here. And maybe even add a little bit of blue in there as well just to balance it out and give it a nice effect like that. And I think right about there we are finished. That should do it for today's tutorial. That is how you can go about creating your own neon text effect using Procreate for the iPad. So if you have any questions about any of this, just leave a comment down below. And as always, thanks for watching.